Elijah Wood's shocking allegations against the entertainment industry. In a new interview with the Sunday Times, the former child star alleges that pedophilia has been a real issue in Hollywood. He tells the publication, quote, There are a lot of vipers in this industry, people who only have their own interests in mind. What bums me about these situations is that the victims can't speak as loudly as the people in power. That's the tragedy of attempting to reveal what is happening to innocent people. They can be squashed, but their lives have been irreparably damaged. The 35-year-old adds, If you're innocent, you have very little knowledge of the world and you want to succeed. People with parasitic interests will see you as their prey. I can get a good career doing this. You know, it's going to be good. Wood says he was not a victim of abuse because his mother, Deborah, protected him and he avoided those kinds of situations. He goes on to allege that even as an adult in the industry, he has been, quote, led down dark paths to realize that these things probably are still happening. Not do all the things that I hated as a child. <laughs> what did you hate? What, what were the sort of things you'd never want to say done? Well, I didn't like it when directors, when I was, you know, six or seven, uh, tried to manipulate me. I don't like being manipulated at all. I have like a complete allergy to it. So they'd say things like, oh, is your dog, how's your dog feel? Because I think your dog isn't feeling well. And I just be like, eh. And that's you know, to elicit, I, elicit a crying reaction. Yeah, from to you. try to elicit some oh, reaction wow. or let's talk about, you know, when your mom was sick. And I'd be like, how about we talk about when your mom was sick? <laughs> um, yeah, it just made me cold. It made me mad. Anytime I feel manipulated, suddenly I just, I start, like horns start coming out of me. Steam starts coming out of my ears. Is it true that when you were 14, your agent punched a producer? Yeah, it is. What happened? Uh, he uh, called me at a, at a friend's house on the weekend where I was having a sleepover, mm. the producer, and um, he pretended that we had a, an appointment that I'd forgotten about, and he, uh, he had me come to the appointment. My mom was out of town. He had me come to the appointment, and uh, he um, was talking to me and then asked me to take my jacket off and turn around so they could see my body. This is 14 years old. Yeah, and I was, you know, I was like 14, and kind of like chubby with pimples and whatever. And uh, yeah, my agent went to his office and punched him in the face. Wow. Trust me, 47 years in the film business is a long time. Just lastly, before I leave you, what's the one thing you'd change about the movie business? <sighs> what would I change about the movie business? Uh, I, I feel like the respect for uh, the director's vision is, is, is gone, I think, in mainstream movies. I think that's what was always wonderful about... Uh... Jodie Foster blows the whistle on elite Hollywood pedophile. Former child star reveals incident from when she was 14 years old. Actor Jodie Foster has revealed an incident that happened to her when she was just a child where a sleazy Hollywood elite attempted to lure her into a rape. The two-time Oscar-winning former child star revealed during an interview that a top producer tricked her into a pedophile trap by faking a movie role opportunity when he knew her parents were I can away. tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. That's the biggest problem for children in this industry. The casting couch even applies to children. Oh yeah. Not in the same way. It's all done under the radar. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh yeah. I was surrounded by them when I was 14 years old. Surrounded. Literally. Didn't even know it. It wasn't until I was old enough to realize what they were and what they wanted and what they were about and the types of people that were surrounding me till I went, oh my God, they were everywhere like vultures. Vultures who Feldman says abused him and his best friend, the late child actor Corey Haim, his co-star in The Lost Boys. Well, what happens if my mom is dating the head vampire? Feldman says the trauma of that pedophilia contributed to Haim's death. There's one person to blame in the death of Corey Haim, and that person happens to be a Hollywood mogul. And that person needs to be exposed, but unfortunately I can't be the one to do it. But the person that knows who did it, and knows who he is, is watching right now, I guarantee you. Hmm. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah. There was a circle of older men that surrounded themselves around this group of kids. Hmm. And they all had either their own power or connections to great power in the entertainment industry. Feldman won't name names. And he admits his friend had a struggle with addiction, which he says was a mechanism to cope with his demons. 
It was a symptom. It was a symptom, correct. Are we in it? In 2008, the two Corys confronted each other on their reality show about the dark past they shared. You let me get around in my life, man, raped, so to speak. When I was about 14 and a half, and I'm saying this right now. What'd you do, man, when you saw that going down when I was 14 to me? What'd you do? You knew about it. You want to talk about the truth? Okay, well, then let's talk about the truth. I was being molested at the same time by somebody else. What'd you do? You know, there's a lot of good people in this industry. But there's also a lot of really, really sick, corrupt people in this industry. And there are people in this industry who have gotten away with it for so long that they feel they're above the law. Hmm. And that's got to change. That's got to stop. Is there a dark side to child stardom? Definitely. I think a lot of kids don't really want to do it. I think that the parents want to do it more than the kids. Chris Snyder says for most child stars, it's the parents that can cause more damage. And he would know, having managed with his late boss Iris Burton, some of the most iconic child stars, including Feldman, River Phoenix, and Drew Barrymore. The biggest problem in the whole thing is when the parents start to live through the kids and quit their jobs and buy expensive houses, buy expensive cars, and the parents aren't understanding it's not going to go on forever. And it just wrecks everything. Feldman's parents managed his career until the money came between them. I got legally emancipated by going to the producer's pension health and welfare plan myself at 14 years old and saying, what were my earnings and what's left? Earnings, by the time I was 13 years old, a million dollars, which is really not that much money. But in those days it was. You know, in the late 70s, early 80s, that was a good chunk of change. And how much was left? 40000 And guess what? When I went in for the emancipation trial, my father said, since I spent my time with you on your last film and took it away from my office where I should have been focused, instead, I'm going to ask you for that $40,000 back as repayment for the money that I lost in my business. You had to pay your dad? Correct. You can check the court filings. That was a fact. Wow. So I started at zero at 15 years old, coming out of the hole. I found when I was a 16 year old, fresh from boarding school, going out into, you know, on the casting couch, I was definitely objectified to an extreme. Um, and when I- Was it the way you made you feel, you were made to feel, yeah, or the way, the way was, you were treated? The way I was made to feel, um, the way I was exploited, um, um, and the, the kinds of roles and the kinds of things I was expected to do in auditions. I mean, I, there was one horrific incident where I, ha I went back for a, a second audition. Um, it was a screen test. There were two other people in the room, um, the director who I'd seen previously and the casting um, director who was a woman. And the director asked me to sit with my legs apart um, the camera was was right between, you know, positioned where it could see up my skirt, to put my leg over the the um, the arm of the of the chair, and before I started my dialogue, think about the character that I was supposed to be having the dialogue with, and and how it felt to be made love to by this person. And I was thinking, this is so strange. Why would I need to do that? But this is the director. He is talking. You know, this is a there's a there's the casting director. It must here. be normal. It must be normal. There's, I'm 18 years old. You know, and I'm thinking this is obviously something that I was in a protected, in, you know, there were boundaries. And three years later, I was at the Cannes Film Festival and we bumped into this, my husband and I bumped into this rather drunk producer, a British producer, who said, oh, who mentioned the director that I had had this, in, this audition with. And he looked very sheepish and walked away. And my husband grabbed him later and said, what are you, why, why, why did you start to say something and then didn't? And it turned out that the director who had... Um, who went on to make the film and who I was auditioning for used to show that video late at night to interested parties at his house. A video of me touching myself with a camera up So my you skirt. were abused, but at the time it didn't feel like and it. And that was in a professional environment. Um, for many of the people you're trying to help, that's an inspiring story because you've obviously done so well from it and you're what able to talk about, about that? it. Here's the thing. What, what does a person do? What does a young woman do in that situation? Obviously, you, I, don't, you know, I shouldn't care about getting the job, number one. Absolutely not acceptable behaviour. You have to realise it's wrong as well, don't you? Also, as an 18-year-old girl, perhaps the older woman in the room 
mm. should have put her job on the line and said, I don't condone this behaviour. It's not just about, this is the thing that Stella Creasy was saying today in Parliament Square, it's not about the person that's been abused, it's not just their role to say enough, it's about the people around. How much are the people that witness, how much are they perpetrators of the crime? We, you know, it's a responsibility that we all need to, need to, to recognise our part in trying to be aware.
You can see it. You ever, you ever have this happen? This is how confusing it is. This, this is the practical application of what I'm talking about. Like a guy be out, this happened to a lot of guys. You be out at a club, bar, right? You just kicking with your boys, and, and a girl walks by, and, and man, she looks good. She looks good. Not good in that classical way. I mean, you know, I'm talking good. Like, she got half her ass hanging out her skirt. Mm. Her titties are all mashed together, popping out the top of her turtleneck and shit. The girl gets mad and says, oh, uh-uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just because I'm dressed this way does not make me a whore. Which is true. Gentlemen, that is true. Just because they dress a certain way doesn't mean they are a certain way. Don't ever forget it. But ladies, you must understand that that is fucking confusing. <laughs> Just ends. Now that would be like me, Dave Chappelle, the comedian, walking around the streets in a cop uniform. Somebody might run up on me. Oh, thank God. Officer, help us. Come on, they're over here. Help us. I'm like, oh, just because I'm dressed this way does not make me a police officer. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, all right, lady, fine, fine. You are not a whore. But you are wearing a whore's uniform, I'll tell you that shit right now. 